Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 519. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because we are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects and what I should think over time will become one of your favorite subjects. You're like, what is this? No, this time we are not talking about sales, uh, but we are going to be talking about making sure you get the most out of every minute of every day because the highest and best use of your time is often not what you're currently doing. And you're like, what do you what do you mean, Jay? I, I'm building my business. Yes, there are certain activities in your business that are required, necessary, mandatory, but that doesn't mean you have to do them. You've heard me say it before. I say it again. The way to build a business is by answering five questions. Why, what, when, who, then, how, in that order. And what we're going to talk about today is a lot of the who. I have with me none other than Bob Lachance. Now, you probably know him already from either coaching or mentoring or his company, Reva Global, because at the end of the day, what it comes down to is when you are building an organization, you're not doing it alone. You're not doing it in a silo. You need help. And he has a virtual assistance company that's going to help all of us continue to become bigger, better, badder investors and do those tasks more efficiently, serve more people and ultimately create more value in the marketplace. Because you know, like I know, and definitely Bob knows that time is our most valuable resource. So with that being said, what I want you to understand, though, is that Bob has he went through this transformation He's in uncharted territory in the sense of going from pro hockey to real estate. Think about that for a second. I know many of you, you probably have that same feeling. Going from the real world to real estate, it can feel like what on earth just happened. But just like me, Bob's got the PhD. That's right, the public high school diploma. That is exactly what we're talking about. So understand this. It's not about how much information you stuffed in your head but it is about the lessons that you have learned along the way. So let's get ready to listen, to learn, and to love Bob LaChance. Bob, how you doing? Very good. Thank you for having me, first and foremost. I love your show. (laughs) Thanks for listening, and I'm glad that you're here. Now, this being the first time that you're here, I have to ask you the same question that I ask everybody else. You ready? I'm ready. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc. Because I think entrepreneurs and superheroes have a ton of things in common. For example, as an entrepreneur, occasionally I can envision myself flying around town, using our products and services, saving customers one sale at a time. And yes, I'm probably wearing a cape at that moment. Also, though, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. So if you take, for example, Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing hoping to be an Avenger one day, and then one day he gets bit by a spider, discovers he's got a superhuman ability, and then he has to choose, do I use it for good or for evil? So my question to you is as follows. Before getting into real estate, before even you know your professional ice hockey, uh, before all of those things that people know you for today, what we want to know is, who is Bob LeChan? <laughs> well, that's actually an interesting question. Never been asked that one before. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I could first of all tell you is I'm definitely not a Harvard grad who got their master's in engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I'll first start with that. Um, I would actually say that I am probably a coach uh, mm. by nature. So coach, mentor, teacher, 
the reason why I say that is uh, growing up, um, you know, I pretty much grew up in a hockey locker room. Mm. I've been fortunate enough, you know, I played every sport there is from football to baseball to soccer, um, et cetera, basketball. Uh, but what the cool thing is when I grew up is I had two older brothers that also played hockey. Um, and every single thing, my, my dad was my coach. And, you know, one of the things when you start, when you get older and older and older, you start, you know, looking back and seeing uh, the things that were right in front of you before, but didn't know until now. So mm. I jump back and forth. If you don't mind me jumping back no. and forth, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. All right. So growing up, um, you know, my father was my best probably by far the best coach. Um, and what I learned from him is, was that he didn't just spend time with me and my brothers. He coached every single kid the same way. And his motto, and one of the things that I learned from, he said, you know what? Each kid is going to get as good as they're going to get, not as good as their parents want them to get. <laughs> so, I thought that was an interesting quote uh, that my dad taught me when I was younger, and I brought that now to, you know, me coaching my my three kids. My th- I have two boys and a girl in hockey. I also take that to, you know, you look at all the business owners around. Um, we all set our goals, and in the end, we are only going to get as good as we are going to be. As much time, energy, and effort that we mm-hmm. put into things, mm-hmm. I. think you know, that's what we are going to accomplish. So just to take a step back, you know, I learned a lot from my dad growing up um, from his coaching style, and that's instilled in me as well. So I think, you know, when I really look at myself, I I look at myself as a coach first, because, um, you know, some of the things that I've done, which is helping to start a couple of coaching programs, my own real estate investing company, and now my virtual assistant company, the same things come into play. And that's really helping people. That's really the driving force that makes me, I guess, the happiest I am. My wife says it perfectly. She goes, you know what? You were born to coach, born to help people. So I think, you know, when I take a step back and I actually look at that, I'm like, you know what? It's got to be a coach. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Now that's good. But I, I've got a question because um, you, you mentioned a number of different sports and there's a lot of, you know, kids and people, myself included, we've all been exposed to many different sports. So um, why hockey? <laughs> well, my father's from Canada, so he came down. Um, <laughs> Are you trying to say you had no choice? <laughs> no choice. No choice. <laughs> that was it's actually funny. That's my, my father's undeniable passion was hockey. So my two older brothers started playing hockey uh, I started playing hockey. I was the youngest of, like I said, uh, two older brothers. And, you know, for me, just watching them and, and just being in the locker room and jumping on the ice with them growing up, you know, my dad coaching all the time, it was just a natural progression. Um, and one of the goals my father set for us, which is nuts to me, but not nuts anymore, he set a goal for each one of us to get college scholarships. Now, <laughs> to, to set that goal, now I'm, I'm, I have three kids. And for me, set a goal for my kids to, to uh, get a scholarship seems nuts. However, two out of three of his, his sons got full scholarships to college. So not that nuts. Yeah. No, that's good. I mean, having vision uh, is one of the necessary components for leadership for sure. But you, you've also done something that's unique because uh, we've – spoken with a number of ex-professional athletes who have made transitions. And it's one of the things that I I love to talk about because oftentimes, uh, having been a professional athlete, you can leave, uh, you know, in this state of, that. well, this is all I can do. You know, what's next, so to speak? Uh, I'm curious to hear as to why real estate was the thing for you after hockey. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Jay, you know, the the fact of the matter was I left. So I went to Boston University for four years. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a full scholarship there. But what that means is when you get something for free, like education, the unfortunate fact is you you don't take full advantage of it. (laughs) So I had an opportunity to sign a professional contract with St. Louis Blues. Um, It was either take the contract now or wait and hopefully it's there after school ends. Uh, so I left two classes short of getting my degree with the idea that I'll always go back. Um, so fast forward how many years ago that was, never went back. Yeah. 
So I didn't have anything. The point of that was I didn't have anything to fall back on, right? If I, you know, the first year I signed, I played um, in St. Louis Blues minor league team for the first two years. Uh, and, you know, that's a triple A level of baseball, just to put some context to that. Uh, after that, I signed, uh, played two more years in U.S. and then four more years in Europe. My last year, uh, my wife and I had our first kid and she was living in the United States. I was in Europe. So it was either a choice of, you know, uprooting my household and bringing them, bringing them all to Europe or uh, retiring. Now, mm. we, we've all had those points of decision. I was only 30 then, right? So I was really young. I had no college degree. I had nothing to fall back on. So I went on the internet. I searched different industries that do not need degrees because I didn't want to go back to school. So um, real estate kept popping up. And so I invested, I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, just like probably 99% of, you know, listeners here probably read that book. <laughs> at least once, right? <laughs> yeah, at least once. And then uh, I also bought a course, uh, a course by the name of Dave Wisnett. I think that's his name. I believe he was an attorney investor, uh, but it got me, you know, interested in real estate. So at that point, I, uh, I jumped two feet in and uh, I bought my first property, actually the first month in business, and it was a rehab property. Uh, made an offer on a property. It was a listed property. Property is listed at, I think it was between 175, 185. This is again, back in 2004. So I don't know the exact number. Uh, but anyway, I put an offer in at 135. They accepted the offer. Um, and the first thought was, uh-oh, what do I do? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I knew nothing about real estate investing. Absolutely zero. But the one thing that I did know is that um, you got to take action in whatever type of industry that you're in. So uh, I made a decision that I got to jump in with two feet. Uh, and in that course that I read, it said farm areas, which means, you know, you get in your car and you drive around neighborhoods and, you know, anything that house that looks dilapidated, any roofs, shingles that are falling down, any, you know, windows that are cracked, grass that's high, et cetera, et cetera. So this one property is listed. It got a, a showing to get in. I opened the door and boom, got smoked by the smell of cat pee. <laughs> <I'm> like, yes. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, yes. So I read in that course that cat pee is very difficult to get rid of. A lot of people are going to turn away. So it's a great opportunity, so on and so forth. So I um, made an offer. You got to realize I had no money. I had no contractors. I can't say no money. I put some money away, but I didn't, you know, I didn't have the full 135 to put into it and to rehab the property, right? I had, I had rehab money put away. And uh, so I went to a local broker at the time. Uh, so you got, you end up getting me financed. I didn't have any contractors, which was another obviously nerve wracking thing for mm -hmm. all the rehabbers on this call. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we know that finding good contractors is not the easiest thing to do. Nope. nope. Uh, but what I did was, again, I went back to the course uh, and it said, you've got to make sure you interview three to five contractors. So I went to the Foothills Trader magazine. I found the first three to four, called them all. One of them showed up. My buddy, his name is Junior. So guess who got hired? <laughs> the guy that showed up. Uh, junior. Yeah, junior got hired. And to this day, probably the best, by far the best contractor in great family friends. He recently uh, moved down to Florida, but anyway, rehab that property, uh, one full month, sold it the next month within two months, made $32,000. And you know, what, what I like about this is that a, a lot of people just got to hear a lot of probably what they're facing right now is it, you've made this decision, but you're, you're lacking resources, whether that be knowledge, time, money, or credit it doesn't really matter you did not let that lack of a, any particular resource prevent you from taking the next step. So I've got a question, though. What part of your training as a athlete do you think played a role in your being able to do that, do that very thing, you know, moving forward, even though you knew you did not have everything you needed? Yeah, I think it's it's goal setting. Uh, let's start with goal setting. And, you know, growing up and, in, in, you know, I was always pushing myself. I was always trying to get better and better and better. You know, the, there's 
no better motivator to, you know, when I played at Boston University, I had a ton of players on my team that were turning pro, playing, you know, playing in the National Hockey League. My brother was number fourth overall draft pick in the world, which is not too bad. Wow. So, yeah, so I had some really, really high goals to attain. Um, in No pressure. <laughs> yeah, no, no pressure. You know, it's funny. I, I actually never felt that as pressure because – I never looked at anybody else saying, I wish I were them Mm. or I wish, you know, I never did that. I just used it as motivation saying, I want to reach that. I want to attain the level that they're at. Um, So, but the good thing is to answer your question is, you know, it's just those small goals that you set for yourself to attain them. And it was just that it was internal drive in, in following through with what you set out to do. Um, You know, I find, You know, to too many people right now, they don't jump two feet into whatever it it is that they want to do. They only stick one toe in or one foot in. And I found that, you know, to accomplish something that you really want to accomplish, you got to jump in with two feet. So I think that was, you know, well, that and putting in blinders on, you know, putting blinders on and not listening to naysayers saying, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? You're, you know. Well, what kind of success rate will you have? I'm, no, no, I, I made a goal and I set it and I'm going to go. And I didn't listen to the naysayers of the world. Well, OK, let's let's be real for a moment. I, I would say that. And, and again, I don't have figures, stats and numbers to back this up. But my instinct tells me that if we're going to talk success rate, I would assume that there's way more real estate investors than there ever were professional hockey players. <laughs> <laughs> you're going up in success rate. You're coming from a professional sport to real estate, which is, you know, there's a lot, you know, less barrier to entry to, to say the least. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. But the, the other thing is, is that um, the, the typical family, friends and relatives look at a degree as the be all and end all, end all. meaning, mm-hmm. you know, they want you to work for someone. They, you know, that, that's just a natural path. My wife was a, a salesperson, like re- really, really incredible salesperson. So for me to get a degree, I also did have the feeling where if I got my degree, I was going to go down a path that I probably wouldn't in the end been happy with, right? Which, <laughs> which would have been working for someone, you know, I didn't grow up a real estate investor at all. Um, and my dad was a contractor, he owned his own business. So, you know, I saw, uh, obviously my household was great to watch that from a business owner standpoint, but it wasn't all peaches and cream. And you know, I saw one of the recessions hit in the late eighties, early nineties that, you know, pretty much hurt the family, but it was a great learning lesson too, as well on, on, you know, looking at passive income as a, as it was kind of funny. I noticed back then Mm -hmm. and I almost, I almost saw a head light years ahead to say, you know what, how do you prevent my whole, my whole thought process was how could I work at McDonald's and not lose the assets that I attained pretty interesting. So, um, and that's passive income. And I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I'm just saying, you know, the, the, my, my thought process back then, and I always said that to myself every single year, even when I was playing hockey, is what could I do to make sure that no matter what, that whatever we build for our family, how do we make sure we don't lose it? And that's low debt with some sort of cash flow. It could be business cash flow, could be properties that we own. And I got a lake house that I rent out and I have two commercial buildings as well. So that obviously helps out in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, that totally understood. It, it's funny how lessons or, or, or watching your parents and just learning, you know, you learn some things without realizing that you're actually learning things because you it's more caught than actually taught in some structured way, etc. <laughs> now, I, I'm curious to know, you, you've been in real estate for a while or as you're going through, you know, you find, you know, certain areas where you Find your level of proficiency. What's been like your strategy du jour? Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. And what I want to say to you is that the number one mistake that I have ever made in business, number one, has been waiting too long to do the books, waiting too long to get the bookkeepers, the accountants, the CPAs, the CFOs involved. And I don't want you to make that same mistake. That mistake cost me 
over six figures. And now for a significant discount, you have the ability to get your books together using FreshBooks. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. Again, that's gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary. FreshBooks is the easy to use software designed to help you, the small business owner, the freelancer, get organized and save time on invoicing, getting paid faster, keeping those books in order so that it becomes a bonus for you to do your taxes as opposed to a burden. Go over to gofreshbooks.com forward slash cash flow diary and get started today. And now let's get back to the rest of the story. You know, when I started as a rehabber and then I, um, one thing I did notice, and this is actually, I think a, a, an important part is that I didn't have any systems. I didn't have any processes. You know, I remember what? After you I, too. No, <laughs> <laughs> I remember flipping that property. And then after when I was done, I'm like, all right, what now I'm looking in the mirror saying, all right, I've just been driving around neighborhoods and I found that one property. I got lucky. So I had, I didn't even know what marketing was. I didn't even, I didn't know anything. So I joined a, a local RIA group, Real Estate Investment Association, and I made it a goal to meet the top investor inside that, uh, it was Connecticut Real Estate Association, and everybody kept turning and pointing to the same person. Mm. Um, so I walked up to him and I said, his name was Pat Precourt. I said, hey, Pat, um, I'm not looking for a job. I'm not looking for anything. Uh, but I'm looking for a team to join. Um, I'm huge on teams. I'm a firm believer that you're only as good as the people on your team. Um, I'm, I think it's really, really mm -hmm. important. You know, that's for me personally. I know some individuals like working by themselves. I can't stand it. Absolutely do not want to work by myself because it's it's more for me satisfying, you know, to where if you and I are working together, Jay, uh, to seeing the results for me to help you attain your goals and your results. And I know I get what I want in the end. So it's pretty interesting how that works. Interesting. Okay. So was, was that the genesis of why you start the VA company? Absolutely. So it's, uh, this is a, an, so going along, I invested, uh, well, I jumped in the short sales for a little bit and we've done, you know, Pat oh, and I were, you're a brave soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually, from uh, 2004 to 2010, we did over 700 short sale transactions. So we had a nice little shop going. Uh, but to rewind, back in 2005, 2006, we helped uh, a run a coaching program down in Florida specific around short sales. Uh, we were very, very successful with that. And then we got, uh, we got approached by... Uh, three buddies of ours to actually help them with their coaching program to be on the team for their coaching program. So we helped grow and build that as well. And then through the years, you know, Pat and I were always looking in the team. We're always looking for what can we add, whether it's a new product, whether it's a new service, what could we add to help more investors be successful? Mm. Now, one of the big, you said at the beginning of the call, one of the huge, 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 uh, challenges that many real estate professionals have it's either they're working part time or they're working full time and they want to get into real estate where they don't have a lot of time to do the tasks. So back in 2013, I got introduced to the virtual assistant world. Um, and it was it was really pre uh, prevalent in the agent world, but not in the investor world. So coming from the background, the coaching background, the mentoring background, the training background, uh, I came up with the idea to start my first virtual assistant company, but train virtual assistants on real estate investor tasks and then marry them with clients in the United States or whoever is investing in real estate. So that was the first company I started back in 2014, and I tested it for two years with uh, with one company, went on our own to uh, launch another company. So um, after that, uh, where we are today. Got it. I, I like it. I like it. So, I mean, the, the, when it comes down to it though, you know, real estate in and of itself, it's got so many different pieces, so many different moving parts, um, for someone who's either getting started or has a, a, a some, their business going, what exactly is, uh, 
and I keep saying Riva Global. I just don't know how you say it, but that's how I, when I read their website, that's what I say it. If that's how you say it, then that's great. What do, what are you guys bringing to the table that's going to help them become bigger, better, and better? You know, it's funny. So I break everything down into steps, just like you did at the beginning of the call. Um, you know, real estate's a, a very simple five-step process. You have marketing, number one. You have lead intake, number two. You have analyzing deals, deal analysis, number three. You got number four, offers and contracts. And number five, you got selling the property. So whether you're a wholesaler, rehabber, buy and hold specialist, Airbnb now is big, property manager, there's tasks that our VAs do that we train on that takes care of uh, different tasks off your plate. So I'll give you an example. Yeah. So on, on the marketing side, you know, if first and foremost, it starts with social media presence. What I mean by that is, you know, if you're a rehabber, hard money lenders, as soon as they they know your name, if they're looking up Bob Lachance, what they're going to be doing is going on my site and seeing what I'm posting every day. Now, if I'm not posting anything, they're not going to have confidence in me to lend me money as an example, right? Understood. So it's the same kind of concept. So what we do is we post every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, it really doesn't matter what you post if it's real estate specific and your audience is our real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. You know, Monday, you could do a motivational quote. Tuesday, you could do a local news link. Uh, Thursday or Wednesday, you could do national news. You could do, you know, you could, uh, you could do a bunch of different things. We have a whole, a whole plan set up, but your virtual assistant can do that for you. That's the point of it. Uh, we have our VA post once a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? What that does, it just gives you a presence around to make everyone know that, Hey, you are in business and you're actually working every single day. So that's mm-hmm. a cool part about that presence. And the three that we mainly focus on are Facebook, uh, Instagram and LinkedIn. So that's something that hmm. we, we look at. Yep. Um, and then I'll give you some other, you good with me giving some more campaigns? Yeah. 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 Well, no, I, I think it's all great. Yeah. I, I, what I was remarking on when you said that is, um, <laughs> a lot of people tend to avoid LinkedIn. So you said, I was like, Oh, that's good. Cause that's <laughs> actually a good one. So, but that's good. Yeah, and I'll take it one step further. A lot of people don't realize this. So if you're a wholesaler and you're looking to build your buyer's list, so if you're a brand new wholesaler or even if you've been around for a long time, you know LinkedIn is a great place to look. So here in Connecticut, uh, what you do is up in the search bar, you search real estate investing associations. Yeah. Boom. Connecticut Real Estate Association pops up as an example. You could have your VA do all of this for you. Join groups, and once you're inside those groups – you could actually search different people in there, scrape their names, scrape their emails, scrape their phone numbers, call them directly to gauge what type of properties they're looking at. So number one, if you're a wholesaler that's in, I don't know, West Hartford, Connecticut, or you're a rehabber in West Hartford, Connecticut, my VA is going to give you a call and say, hey, Bob, hey, how's it going? Um, we're actually own an investment company over here. We're just wondering what you're looking to buy. You know, a, what are you buying? What's your criteria? What kind of money you got, et cetera, et cetera, right? So what you do is you gauge that motivation. It doesn't take any time out of your day. Your VA will do that for you. There's, there's an example. Um, marketplace on Facebook as well uh, is another thing in building a buyer's list. Um, so again, there's some Craigslist things that we mm-hmm, train mm-hmm. Um, I could go on for hours upon hours. <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear it. Now, I, I've got a question because you said something that's of particular interest to me. Uh, as we have shifted our focus to the short-term rental world, I'm curious to know what you guys are doing in that space. Well, on the short-term rental side, so for the rental side, let's say property manager, uh, majority of the calls right now, our VA, so the top tasks are managing their CRM and coordinating maintenance. I'll give you a good example. Yep, yep. Um, I was sitting across from um, one of the local property managers. This was at the beginning of last week. Her name is Cecilia. And her phone did not stop ringing. They have 200 properties they're managing. It was a gas company. So she had to actually take the call, coordinate the gas company getting in, call her acquisition person who actually handled all this stuff. And then they had to call the tenant to get in. So out of that one gas company wanting to get in, it took about an hour out of her day. Yep. So a VA does all of that for you. Instead of 
coordinating, you know, instead of spending that hour, this is only one property in one unit. She has 200 units. Mm -hmm. She told me that she didn't actually have a day off in five, last five years. And I'm like, wow. So a lot of the maintenance coordination is a huge task relief for, you know, people, obviously individuals like yourself or property managers or unit owners. Interesting. Got it. Yep. Totally understood. Now, when it comes down to building such a company, because this is, while it's real estate, it's real estate adjacent. It's not actually real estate. You get where I'm coming from? Correct. This is yep. different. How has that been? What has that journey been like? Because, you know, you could say we've gone from hockey to real estate now to business. And I'm going to assume that some skill sets transfer, but there's probably some differences. Yeah, you know, it, it's really problem solving is what it is, right? Um, and I did this presentation about a year ago on on finding voids and filling voids in a market, right? So and I'm a firm believer that there's a million dollar business no matter where you go. I'm looking out the window, there's snow outside. I guarantee <laughs> there, there's probably maybe a snowblower idea, maybe the uh, a different type of salt, maybe you know, a different type of asphalt, whatever it is, I guarantee there's a million dollar business from where I am looking through my window to snow on the ground, right? So I think that's really, really important. But in the end, it's filling a need. If you look at any kind of industry, and I think, you know, you look at real estate, you look at my background of, of ice hockey, right? I grew up in a hockey locker room, but there's one common theme. It's you have a lot of people around you and mm. it's all communication. So if I would say what translates from hockey, it's probably, you know, the coaching that I got. I've had some of the most remarkable coaches that I've ever had. I didn't realize that when I, at the time, <laughs> I, I, don't I realized how, how important they were, but it's more the communication behind it. And, you know, it, it's a lot of it is just talking and communicating. And now that I'm a parent, my communication skills need to get better and better and better because mm. the, every age you get different challenges you got to deal with. Yeah, preaching to the choir on that one. As soon yep. as my, as soon as I get used to my kids being one way, they they up and have a birthday and change and stuff. I'm like, <laughs> yes, stop exactly. it! Stop it! It doesn't work out like that. It's all good. Now, um, for for those that have listened this far, want to find out more about what you've got going on. What's going to be the best way for them to catch up with you? Absolutely. You could check out either my website, which is revaglobal.com, which is R-E-V-A global.com, which stands for Real Estate Virtual Assistant. Uh, so revaglobal.com, or you could send me an email, uh, which my direct email is bob at revaglobal.com. Excellent. Excellent. Now, as we wind down, I've got a final question for you because I'm curious to hear your answer. When it... Um you know, as, as people tend to listen to to the episodes, they they start in one spot, they end up in another, and oftentimes they can feel inspired to to finally take action. You know, that there's probably someone going, you know what, I'm I'm going to do this. I I can do real estate, and I, I can get the virtual assistance. I, I can make time to to make all of these things happen. It is a journey. It's an iterative process, and I can do it too. And they're at what I like to call the precipice of decision. So. My question to you is as follows. You know, like I know, that when we get to that precipice, we often have a companion. And that companion comes in the form of a voice that reminds us of how it doesn't work, won't work, can't work. And who are you to think it would work? And what on earth are you? You play hockey. You don't do real estate. What are you talking about? I mean, and for some people, they're related to that voice. So what would you say to the following person? Let's pretend that they're going to actually follow through and do what you suggest. They're going to do so in the next 24 to 48 hours. And Bob, they're coming to you saying, what do I do? <laughs> you know what? For me, here's what I would do. I would get educated in what you want to do. So if it's wholesaling, get educated in wholesaling. If it's rehabbing, get educated in, whole, uh, in rehabbing. If it's buy and holds, et cetera, et cetera. I'm a firm believer of you need to get educated. You know, it's kind of funny since I left school. Um, you know, I didn't think of that when I, when I went, went to school, but now that I'm done, um, I think education and, and mentoring is the first thing that I would do. I got, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate that I found a mentor when I first got into it. There weren't many 
coaching programs out there, but I would highly recommend jumping in, you know, do your due diligence, jumping into um, a coaching program. And I bought everything. I was a buyer, meaning whatever type of education is out there, I invested in it. And I think that's really, really important to do. And then after that, you got to implement, right? So it's live, or it's learn it, live it, gift it. So I, I like those three things, learn it, live it, gift it. Love it 100%. Uh, I definitely appreciate your journey. Uh, I love the fact that you're my fellow PhD brother uh, out there uh, and, and making real estate happen, not only for yourself, but for other people uh, as well. And uh, I thank you for taking the time to share your knowledge, wisdom, and insight here with us today at The Cashflow Diary. Awesome. Thank you for having me. appreciate the time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means get over to RevaGlobal.com. Why? Because you know you needed help. That I mean, that's not a secret uh, at the end of the day. You can hear in his voice how a team makes a difference. And you know that you need more people on your team. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, you've got a great idea. Let it flourish and grow by enlisting the help of others. It's been fun talking to you guys today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. 